In, in terms of the sort of meaning that seems to be endowed upon journey, now obviously some of that comes from outside people sort of projecting meaning, mm -hmm. but it seems like the game has a substance and, and something to say. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it about something in particular? Um, journey basically is kind of, uh, you know, like wherever I work on games, I, I like to uh, get serious and theoretical foundations from a uh, classic and traditional medium that, that actually works. Because, you know, when you are taking risks to make something new, you better risk, do something that reduces risks, right? So uh, Journey is kind of like uh, a, a, a mush-up between the Joseph Campbell's work on the hero's journey, which is often used in Hollywood for films, uh, and uh, the Confucius definition of this uh, eighth stage of life. Uh, because, uh, and you know, through what I did with Flower, which is a typical Hollywood three-act structures, and just matching all three together, and, and I realized they are actually the same. Uh, and trying to uh, create a game that evoke a power, a sense, a powerful feel, emotion of mystery and uh, awe, um, and uh, through the journey of a lifetime, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> this is really like the most epic game I can think about. It. The journey of a lifetime, right? And the this the <laughs> the a journey of mystery and all. And I couldn't think about anything more grand than that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that puts a lot of pressure on my next game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't, how'd you get bigger than the whole life? Yeah, right, exactly. So I don't know. <laughs> so in, in um, Journey, as well as the actual gameplay, there are these sort of cutscenes. They seem to draw mm -hmm. on that, the Joseph Campbell sort of mythology and the power of mythology. Mm -hmm. um, and they seem to hint at a, at a story. Is there anything you can say about that? Actually, the Joseph Campbell part is the actual gameplay, the, play, okay. the player plays. You know, it's the, the hero's um, journey leaving his homeland and going to retrieving something and benefiting the society. Um, but the cutscenes, you know, what the white uh, ancestor spirit is showing you, are actually a storyline we kind of worked out our own. Mm -hmm. We talked, uh, we, when we make Journey, it was 2009, that's when the oil price is going crazy. So we were thinking about a, you know, kind of reference towards a society about the consumption of a, a limited energy resource. Mm -hmm. And eventually it will be depleted and what happens to that society. And so in the the world of journey, the ancient society used this energy source of cloth, and the cloth is actually made of essence of life, you know, living things. Mm -hmm. um, and people eventually consumed all the cloth, and they had to sacrifice other lives and turn them into cloth. And basically, that's why in the end, journey's land has no life whatsoever. There's no water even. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of because oil is essentially, you know, the essence of ancient lives. And so we're kind of doing the referential thing, but then we, when we make it so obvious, like a science fiction, it's kind of too preachy, so we start to kind of turn it down. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to make it vague, so people don't necessarily pick up the oil crisis stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a moment I really liked um, in the, the tapestry mm -hmm. where you had two individual of the sort of journey characters <laughs> and they were joined by their fabric, their scarf. Mm -hmm. and, th th and then there came a point where they were separated. Mm -hmm. And it, for me, that sort of talked about, you know, in the game, you're an individual, but then also you're not because you're, you're joined by other players. Was that an intentional sort of allegory? Um, th I don't recall there is an image like that. We used to have that in early games, uh, in a couple of E3. But the final version in the game was the image where there is cloth between two characters. They are actually uh, tearing it apart. Yeah, that was, th and that was I the know. moment. Yeah, yeah, that's the moment where they used to be together, and now they are competing mm. for resources. Yeah, uh, and the war starts. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm giving out too much uh, spoiler <laughs> here. Uh, and uh, it's interesting. It's just like uh, for that civilization, even the the machine 
the stone serpent was not originally designed for war. It was for collecting resources. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of ambiguous, you know, the, are they war machine? Are they harvester? You know, are they a killing thing or are they just basically suck up whatever that's cloth? So you never know. Mm -hmm. Some of the things which are often synonymous with video games for people who don't play is this sort of sense of violence or shooting. Mm -hmm. um, is that, do you think, something which we're going to grow out of in the game industry? Well, um, I think, you know, when a child learns how to play piano, it's bum 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 bum. It's like a hundred percent on every note. Uh, and you look at uh, a grown up playing piano. There's a lot of like half laying, a subtle touch on each keys. And I think that's very much like how the industry will grow. You know, when you first discovered a note like shooting, hmm. then boom boom boom, everybody yeah. will be all about <laughs> shooting, it. right? Yeah. Um, and then it's, it's it's eventually the shooting has to start have to nuance like. Max Payne is very different from GTA, which is different from Uncharted, which is different from not uh, the the latest The Last of Us, mm -hmm. right? It starts to have nuances, uh, and what I think is that a lot of games these days are mostly made of the same note, because they realize that there's a huge market there. But uh, I like to see each note as a note. Mm -hmm. So there's violence in all my games. So in uh, far at the end, you're like smashing all these constructions and you're breaking towers, yeah. explosive things, right? That's pretty violent. Mm -hmm. And you got the, the pylons that if you touch them, yeah, it's yeah, a shock. Yeah. And exactly. So with Journey, the, the stone serpent will hit on you. They will, hit, you know, basically do violent things to you, and the nature is doing violent things to you, and mm. right. And but then, why? nobody felt offended by the violence there, right? I think it's violence is a very useful tool to tell your story and it's just where you want to use it. Are you overusing it, you mm. know? Um, and I think uh, a word without conflict is very hard to render to be real. Mm. And usually conflict is shown in the form of violence. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, a cinder storm is a violent thing. Yeah. You know, so destruction is a part of the nature, and so you know, how do you present that? Um, I think a, I think to have a nice balance is important. I think many people loved the Uncharted 2 uh, Tibetan village thing, mm -hmm. where there's no shooting at all, right? And it just brings a sense of realism to the world. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, if there's any sign, I think the future game will have less shooting. I mean, at least a less frequent violence scene, one after another. Mm -hmm. It has to have a balance. Yeah. So. Yeah, it feels like um, that has to be on the table. The option of not shooting for quite a prolonged time <laughs> needs to be yeah, something that we can do if we yeah, want. You know, it's all about what you use the shooting for, right? Like mm. for me, <coughs> I think violence is a great way to construct an emotional roller coaster like in the case of journey violence is used towards the player so it was very good to bring the intensity low so it make the people feel down mm. and then when they get freedom they feel high so you can create that contrast um, and for f the case of flower we use the violence to create an active note so you're 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 afraid of these pylons and you're scared of them and then in a climax you could actually <laughs> destroy those yeah. pylons so that's kind of like a you know hate and a revenge you know satisfaction um, so yeah you should think about how you use violence you know mm -hmm. in, in your vocabulary as a as a as an artist mm -hmm. and just rounding off um what you're achieving with the game seems to elicit um an unusual response in the, in your players. I, I see on the on your website you have mm -hmm. lots of fan art on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, are there particular responses that sort of stick in your mind, or things that you think, oh, this that was? I'm glad that that person had that experience with something I created. Well, I think um, most of the responses are very um, similar. Mm -hmm. um, Quite a lot of veterans has written to us uh, after the war. They have 
multiple amputations and PTSDs, and they have a tough time trying to live their life. And, and Journey is a game about struggle and the beauty of struggle and, and transcends. And by playing the game, they, they see hope. I think mm -hmm. it's a game of hope. Uh, they see the beauty of life, and they told us it gives them strength to continue to live on. Um, and then there are people, a lot of people, actually, I would say more than 10 emails, like surprisingly all the same story where they lost some family member recently mm -hmm. and they couldn't leave their grief. Uh, and then when they play the game, they met someone online. Somehow they all projected that person is the, 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 the family mm -hmm. member they lost. Mm -hmm. Uh, and by working with them together from living to the death, they felt they are able to say goodbye. Mm. That's, uh, a big, that's a really big thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that was something I didn't see coming. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just thinking I need to be faithfully, you know, um, following Joseph Campbell's work and faithfully delivering a, a life that is that feels real. Um, but I didn't see it can offer that kind of healing uh, possibility. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then, you know, the third type is just, you know, students who like games and they love Journey and they, you know, it inspires them to make new kind of games. Mm -hmm. And also to do art around the game. Mm -hmm. And we had that we had a song with Flower where someone I work with wrote a, wrote a song to review Flower. Um, oh, right. Which is, I think, how we actually met in the first place. Yes. Uh, I love this song. <laughs> to dream as a flower would. Oh, I know now. But it's like to write a symphony with my fingertips. Who said? And who said? And who said? Couldn't touch the depths of emotion with. I remember uh, last Christmas, it was when IGN gave us the game of the year, and I, I received like four emails from IGN staff who I've never met or maybe only met once, and they just congrats. And I was in China, you know, on the other side of Earth, and I just felt this strange sensation of love um, that, you know, a small game like this could actually win Game of the Year. That's just amazing. And and these people who barely know me, I mean, I'm, I'm not a very social guy. I'm not, you know, I'm not a typical good friend of anybody. And them congratulating me for this game, I start to realize, you know, it's not because me, I'm a such a popular guy, people look, likes me, no. It's because they love what I love, which is these games. And it's kind of like they love my baby. And, yeah. and I, as an extension, I started to feel like I was loved. Uh, and it's uh, extreme joy uh, I rarely felt in my life. <laughs>